All right, take two. Thanks for joining us this evening for our Holiday Otter Wrap-Up Party. My name is Chanel Hasten. I'm the Director of Outreach and Community Relations for the Alaka Alliance. We're so thrilled to present to you tonight some of our top highlights and accomplishments of 2021 so far. Um, and I also have a wonderful co-host this evening. Go ahead, Bob. Hey, Bob Bailey, a board president of the Alaka Alliance and a sidekick for this little adventure tonight. Thank you. Awesome. So we will have a couple flash prizes during the presentation tonight. So I'll pose a question and please use the chat box to submit an answer within 15 seconds. Uh, so these are going to go quick. So be sure to get your answer in and whoever gets closest will win a prize um, who guessed first. So without further ado, we're going to talk about one of our biggest accomplishments of this year. Oops. Our feasibility study. Yay. Yeah, now let me launch into that a little bit. Yeah, and thanks to our, our scientist dream team. We, uh, this has been a long time in the coming. It, it was one of the first things that uh, it was suggested that we do is to conduct a thorough scientific review of What's out there? Has this been done before? What are the barriers? What are the opportunities? What are the limitations? And so this has been about two, two and a half years in the making. We recruited a, a great team led by Dr. Tim Tinker, who's down there in the lower right-hand corner. I twisted his arm after he was the uh, faculty advisor to uh, a master's student over at OSU working on this topic. And Tim consented to, to lead this study and he uh, roped in some of his colleagues, including from the upper left, uh, Jim Bodkin, uh, who is a longtime uh, sea otter ecologist uh, in Alaska for the US Geological Survey. Uh, Dr. Jim Estes, who is sort of the granddaddy of sea otter science going clear back to the early 1970s. Uh, Jan Hodder, who is a retired uh, professor from the University of Oregon Institute for Marine Biology. Uh, not only has local knowledge, but a long time interest in sea otters. Uh, on the lower left is Dr. Sean Larson from the Seattle Aquarium, who's just been super in supporting us. She specializes in genetics and sea otter conservation. In the middle there on the bottom is Dr. Mike Murray. Dr. Mike is the chief veterinarian at the Monterey Bay Aquarium and a really super guy. He wrote a very interesting chapter. And of course, then in the red parka is Tim Tinker himself. And on the right is the cover, the very groovy co cover that, uh, Chanel, who, who's the artist on that? It's, it's a great cover and supplies all the graphics for all the chapters. Yeah, his name is Lonnie Hurley, and he is a local artist here in Portland. Super. Well, let's uh, go to the next one there, Chanel. You got it. Okay. Um, yeah, if, if for those of you that haven't looked at this, I really commend that you do. We've broken it down and it's posted on our website. It's easy to find. Uh, each chapter is, is posted separately, not only the full chapter, but a uh, an ex, kind of an executive summary that breaks down the key points. And those are usually no more than a page or two in, in length. So you might want to eat that meal first before you try to digest the whole thing. But 12 chapters. Uh, fun fact to know and tell, it mentions sea otters 1,881 times, and why not? This is a feasibility study about bringing sea otters back to Oregon. We had a, a comment uh, form at the end of the feasibility study, left it open for three months to, to collect comments, and we must be doing something right or else the thing is absolutely impenetrable because we got a grand total of four comments back, and we'll be addressing those with our... Uh, team starting on Monday. We've got a phone call with Tim Tinker to go over these comments, and then we'll have a final draft uh, early next month. And uh, so the decision is still out as to whether we're going to leave it just in, in an online form or whether we're actually going to print some hard copies for posterity and park them in various libraries around and make them available for, for purchase. So uh, it's a huge it's a huge step for the Alaka Alliance and for this in this whole effort to bring sea otters back, and it's going to provide the basis for us going forward to have conversations with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife, uh, and uh, others 
about next steps that we might want to take. So uh, I'm, I'm real proud of this thing. I'm, I'm thrilled that the team uh, participated and wanted to get involved with this and they did a bang up job. So I commend it to you. All right. Perfect. I also want uh, to give a shout out to Defenders of Wildlife, Andy Johnson, who helped myself uh, summarize each chapter, which you can find on the website, so you don't have to read through 302 pages. We give you quick little summaries. Uh, so he was very helpful with that. So was Kathleen Gobush as well with Defenders. So special yeah, shout out and thank you to them. That was very helpful for us. Yeah, they, thank you, Chanel. They've been super partners. And, you know, Andy was at the uh, Monterey Bay Aquarium for many years working on sea otters, has a deep background in this. And Kathleen, of course, with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in her former life uh, working on monk seals in Hawaii. So two very knowledgeable people helping us out here. Appreciate it. Yes. Okay, ding, ding, ding. We have our first instant prize Ooh. giveaway. All right. So use your chat feature. You have 15 seconds to guess how many webinars did we host in 2021? Go for it. All right. No, nope. nobody's got it so far. There's some right. close ones. Not yet. Ooh, I see some close guesses there. Yeah. Oh, up, up, people. Go higher, higher, higher. Uh, yeah. Oh, Jonathan, too high. Yes. Jess, my <laughs> friend, Jess, you won. The answer was 21 presentations. Congratulations. You're going to get a special surprise gift in the mail soon. Um, so, yes, obviously, this year we did not host uh, in person events, which honestly, was pretty okay in the fact that we can reach so many more people through the interwebs and with Zoom. So uh, we had various partners that we presented with or had speak with us. So I wanted to shout out to the Portland Audubon, Defenders of Wildlife and Sea Otter Savvy for letting us uh, present during Sea Otter Awareness Week. Coos History Museum, which is also really amazing if you want to take a trip and visit. It's a really beautiful museum. Um, I saw it when we were there for the Oregon. Um, oh my gosh, now my. Oregon my Coast family. Visitors Association. Yes, the, with the Oregon Coast Visitors Association uh, tourism event. And Mid Coast Water Council, Mid Coast Watershed Council, Oregon Free Diving Company. Friends of Cape Falcon Marine Reserve, Osher Institute. So if you are part of a group and would like us to present with you next year, please reach out. We would love to. Betcha. All right. So I want to thank our board of directors. This, uh, this, uh, this is an effort and it takes all of the board members and their talents, their interests, their connections, <clears throat> to make this thing go. Uh, longtime members, uh, Cameron LaFollette, the executive director of the Oregon Coast Alliance is an historian. She's re really added a lot to, and we hope will continue to add a lot to the historical understanding of these things. Uh, she's been, and Peter Hatch, shown here, been working on with others on a special edition of the Oregon Historical Quarterly. We've got our fingers crossed that the manuscripts submitted will be uh, approved. Bobby Hall, of course, longtime emeritus professor of anthropology, worked with the Coquille tribes uh, for years. She's got a deep interest and experience in sea otters on the Oregon coast. Of course, Peter Hatch, and uh, from the, uh, who's our uh, secretary, uh, Celeste tribal member with a deep uh, interest in uh, this whole topic in his family. His father, Dave, was really the, the founder of our effort, Robert Kenta, tribal council member of the Confederated Tribes of Celeste Indians. Robert is kind of our guidance on uh, all things sea otters in terms of uh, tribal cultures and, and approaches. Claire Pucci on the lower left is uh, uh, now our uh, vice president. Claire is a longtime professional in the uh, wildlife arena, worked for several state agencies, uh, the Columbia Gorge uh, commission, etc., and it's great to have her on the team. Katie Russell, a relatively new member, 
and I'll get up to Renee in a minute. Katie Russell is a relatively new member. She's a graduate student at the University of Oregon. And I also want to highlight, jump up then to Renee Davis, who I met 20 plus years ago when she was just a graduate student or postgraduate at uh, Oregon State University. We've stayed in touch over the years and I finally shanghaied her into this effort. Uh, she's currently with the Oregon Watershed Enhancement Board as deputy director or formerly was deputy director. She's on to other tasks now, uh, fire recovery, uh, funding, et cetera. But super glad to have Renee on board. Uh, David Shepherdson, uh, is, uh, he, he was uh, great to bring onto the board with a lot of experience on conservation activities, including bringing back California condors with the Oregon Zoo. Paul Sherman, uh, retired from uh, Cornell University, lives down in, in Curry County. He brings a keen scientific mind and, and a sharp uh, intellectual uh, bent to our whole effort. Avalyn Taylor was involved with the Alaco Alliance 20 plus years ago. She's putting in her time as an environmental attorney and she's uh, very helpful in guiding us along. Uh, Doc Slider is the chief of the Confederated Tribes of Coos, Lorumpqua, and Sayuslaw Indians. Really thrilled to have Doc involved in this whole effort. So it's a great team. Uh, I really rely on them and their expertise and uh, it's fun to have them as partners in this whole thing. However, this last year we did lose one of our members. Don Ivey was kind of the, one of the leading uh, figures in the original Alaka Alliance 20 plus years ago and in reconstituting it here four years ago. Don lost a battle, a health battle back in July. We miss him. We miss his, his wit, his guidance, and his spirit. Uh, Don was a big part of what we do, and so we, we honor him tonight. Okay, so another big accomplishment for us this year was working with the Oregon Zoo, who have been an amazing partner and support of our efforts. Um, special thank you to Shervin Hess from the Oregon Zoo, uh, who produced, directed, edited our two wonderful videos um, that hopefully you've seen on social media on the Oregon Zoo or the Alaka Alliances. And if you haven't, you can check them out on our YouTube channel. Uh, you can see here our first video uh, is on cultural significance of Oregon sea otters. And here are some behind the scene images from our shoot on the coast at Otter Rock um, and in the forest just inland from that. And so I'll press play and hopefully this will come through to you and not be patchy. Just a couple seconds. This coast is such a place of raw and tremendous power where the world's biggest ocean comes up against the land, but it's also a nurturing place, the place that has sustained my ancestors and sustains all of us to this day. We rely on the bounty that the upwelling of the Pacific brings to our ecosystem. It's easy to come to this beautiful place and get the sense that because it's beautiful, everything is as it should be. But unfortunately, we inherit an ecosystem that is out of balance. And in large part, that's because of the absence of one particular animal, the sea otter. Yep. All right. So be sure to go to our YouTube if you haven't seen the full video. It's fantastic. We also just submitted this video uh, into two film festivals. So keep your fingers crossed for us. Okay. And so just recently, uh, early in December, we released our second video with Shervin um, and the Oregon Zoo. And this time we interviewed Aaron Galloway from the University of Oregon and Dave Lacey from South Coast Tours uh, at the Gold Coast or Gold Beach, sorry. And um, two other beautiful filming locations. You had to pull our legs to go down to Southern Oregon to film with them. Um, and so this highlighted the ecological and economic importance of Oregon sea otters. So hopefully the first video worked for you. Nobody gave me any negative feedback. So yeah. let's play a couple seconds of this. 
I have a lot of respect for sea otters. They're in this super cold water without a blubber layer. You know, they're doing all this just with hair. It's pretty amazing that they can keep that up. And to keep that up, of course, they have to eat quite a lot. They're so important to the ecosystem. One thing I think people don't really understand about them is that they've been extinct in Oregon since the early 1900s. The reason that there's no sea otters in Oregon is that they were all hunted out. We don't know what it really would look like naturally. Everything we see is the result of over 100 years of one of the most important predators not being here. All right. So once again, jump to our YouTube channel if you haven't seen the full video. This is another really fantastic one. Okay, next one. No, one I, I, I also want to say uh, real quickly, Chanel, that yeah. uh, we were contacted recently by uh, folks at the Weather Channel who somehow heard about us. And uh, so they'll be doing some interviews with us here soon, but they wanted to see some video uh, that they could uh, learn from and use some images from. So we sent them these two videos. So you may at some time soon on the Weather Channel see some of these images and this footage uh, there. I know, it's super cool. exciting. I forgot to mention before my something was covering my notes, but this video has been seen um, over almost a thousand times on YouTube and over 40,000 views on Facebook or yeah, that's right. And then let's see. Boy, there we go. And this one has been seen 155 times on YouTube and 60,000 views on Facebook. Woo, okay, super. Moving on, oh my gosh. Every time I click a button, it starts playing. Sorry about that, folks. Okay, here we go. Another prize, ah. prize category. This time, how much did KP raise for us in October for her 24 hour live stream? This was our largest and quickest fundraiser of the year. All right. Yeah, this was this was an amazing event. She started at what? 10 o'clock on a Saturday morning and she yeah. finished at 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning and she stayed up the whole cotton picking night with pals uh, online from all over the world talking about otters and playing games and donating money and just generally drinking wine and generally carrying on and uh, raising money. So it was it was amazing to me as an old duffer uh, to see this uh, global community online. Yes. All right. So the closest answer we have from Claire Poochie is 21,000. The grand total was $21,217. That was from 216 donations from 172 individuals, which is insane and amazing. Uh, so if you don't know what Twitch is, it is a gaming uh, service, so like kind of like a social media service where you can watch people and interact with people playing video games. So who knew that there there's an untapped market for people who love sea otters, and KP found that. She's a wonderful marine biologist. Uh, she just moved to Connecticut, I believe, to work at the Mystic Aquarium with beluga whales, uh, but she still has lots of sea otter content if you want to follow her. Yeah, she does some really interesting videos on her own. She, she produced one recently that really struck me. It's like, what do sea otters see and how do they see it? You know, what's their vision like and, uh, you know, the color spectrums that they have to see and the amount of motion and that kind of thing. So, yeah, she's she's good. Yeah, she has a lot of wonderful YouTube videos, too. So thanks, KP, for that yeah. wonderful fundraiser. We really appreciate it. Yep. So in the when we first started this whole thing back in uh, 2018, one of the first things we wanted to do is hold it. Sea Otter Science Symposium, and we did so in person in the fall of 2018. Uh, actually, in the fall of 20, was it 2018? Yeah, and uh, it was, uh, you know, we had, what, 70 people there, 60 people there in person. Well, last year, of course, um, 
well, we didn't do it two years ago, but last year we did it again, but uh, virtual. And then we did it again this year virtually. And we had hundreds and hundreds of participants sign up. We had a really interesting set of speakers focused on issues uh, primarily related to the uh, issues in the Sea Otter uh, feasibility study. And again, here's some of the speakers. Tim Tinker over here on the left gave a couple of presentations, one on the feasibility study, uh, Jan on the habitat on the Oregon coast. Uh, the third one over, Sal Jorgensen gave a really interesting talk about great white sharks, which are uh, uh, something that we need to know more about. But he's a researcher down at UC Santa Cruz connected with the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Sal gave a really interesting talk that has implications for us. Uh, Sean Larson, of course, talked about the uh, genetics, uh, the genetic uh, connection of the Northern Sea Otter, Southern Sea Otter, and where Oregon fits in that. Dr. Mike Murray gave a summary of his section on uh, the various diseases and health issues associated with sea otters. Lynn Lee, who is a uh, uh, with the uh, Parks Canada up on Haida Gwaii, gave a really interesting talk. We've been talking with Lynn quite a bit over the, the last couple of years about work on Haida Gwaii, uh, looking at restoring kelp to uh, various areas around the island, particularly as sea otters come back. And then our friend Jim Bodkin talked about translocations uh, from other areas around the world and lessons for Oregon. Uh, down on the lower left here, Sarah Hamilton gave us a great overview of kelp on the Oregon coast. She has completed her, her uh, doctorate at OSU and working on uh, at a postdoc level. She was actually one of our original speakers uh, three years ago at our first symposium. And it was great to see her work here now come to fruition through her uh, PhD. Michelle Zwartjess with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service gave us an overview of the procedural and regulatory hoops we're gonna need to go through. Not as daunting as you might believe, but it will take some time. Alan Shanks there with, in the cap is a longtime expert in Dungeness crab and gave a really fun and very uh, informative overview of Dungeness crab on the Oregon coast. And since it's crab season now, and we are all, we're all out going and buying this thing for our Christmas crab louis, you might want to go check out Alan's presentation about uh, crab and their life history. It's very interesting. Uh, Kyle Cavanaugh uh, and uh, Underwater Pat and Emma, all, the, the last three there gave a really interesting keynote address linking science and art uh, around uh, uh, kelp on the West Coast. And so all these uh, speakers, all these presentations are on our website, uh, in our YouTube channel, and I commend them to you. They're up, they're there with all the rest of our uh, webinars. So good, good information. We're not uh, hiding our light under a bushel basket. We want to get it out, and so you can share those too. Yeah, fun little tidbit is in the second video that we released with the Oregon Zoo. Uh, myself, Pat, and Emma, the bottom two down here, uh, we went out and Pat and I went scuba diving and Emma was snorkeling over at Red Fish Rocks Marine Reserve and some of that footage you'll see in that second video of the bull kelp and it was really beautiful, also really surgy. So if you have you know, not a good stomach, not that fun to scuba dive in, but uh, it was still really fantastic in my first dive here on the Oregon coast. So that was really special. What did you say it was like diving in a washing machine? Yeah, we just, we basically went on the side of a pinnacle at around 30 feet and then just went with the swell every seven seconds or so. You'd go 20 feet to the left and then 20 feet to the right. Um, so. <laughs> It was, uh, you know, good for you. Very, very interesting. But um, sometimes some dives are like that. You just go with the flow, as they say. Um, okay, on to the next. So I joined. Yay. I know this is really exciting, folks. I joined Alaka Alliance in April of this year, and. Bob said, hey, you know, we kind of have an idea with Seven Devils Brewery, Carmen and Annie, um, who are the owners there, uh, about doing a beer festival. And so 
another prize question. <laughs> Didn't even read it yet. Um, prize, 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 ding, ding, ding. So does anybody know what <laughs> malt uh, kind of was the inspiration of the Oregon Otter Beer Challenge? This might be a little harder than just guessing numbers. Um, I, I like this first answer from Jessica. Otter something? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and Ryan, yeah, yeah. I want to try the beer too. There's yes. going to be a lot of them. Chanel will tell you all about it here in a moment. I will. No, not Otter Ale. Close. Maybe I'll throw another question in if somebody doesn't get it here in a couple seconds. All right, let's do a numbers one. Um, how about how many breweries are participating in this Otter Beer Challenge? There you go. Good question. So we, um, the malt is called Maris Otter. So Jesse, we're close. Um, and so we asked, we pitched this out to different breweries in Oregon to create a Otter Beer with 70% of Maris Otter malt and whatever else they would like to throw in there and have a creative otter themed name and donate a portion of the sales back to the Alaka Alliance. So let me check here on the numbers. Yeah, if you go online, you can look up Maris, M-A-R-I-S, Maris mm -hmm. Otter malt. It's a, it comes out of England, who knew? Uh, so Ready-made malt and apparently it's favored by a lot of these craft brewers in making barley wines and some of the heavier brews. But we thought, perfect, nice, rich, malty uh, brew would be good this time of year. Yeah, so we have this great logo um, that we got designed by Scrappers, who is a local designer here in Portland that I've worked with a lot with Surf Rider Portland. And so be on the lookout next year for some more fun t-shirts uh, that will sell with that logo on it. Uh, nobody's guessed the right answer yet. We originally had 14, but one person backed out at the moment. So there you go. That kind of just gave you the answer. Um, Mary Lowe, <laughs> you got it. We here are the breweries. We have Binary Brewing Company, Chetco Brewing down in Brookings. That's our furthest participant. Sun River Brewing in Central Oregon. Stickman Brewing Company, which is right down the street from me. And Tualatin Lake Oswego. Yahats Brewing out on the coast. Pelican on the coast as well. And they're actually hosting their launch event um, on January 21st at their Cannon Beach location. And so we just have a Facebook event for that if you wanna check out more information. Seven Devils Brewing, obviously, who helped create this whole concept. Um, they also used seaweed, dulse seaweed in their beer. So they just released it last Sunday. So if you are in Coos Bay, go check them out. Homegrown um, Public House and Brewery in Florence, Tin Barrel Brewing Company, Fort George, Gigantic, Ex Novo and Lycum Brewing. So we've got a big, big shout beer. out to Seven Devils, to Annie and Carmen. They mm -hmm. just opened a new pub on the waterfront right next to the Coos History Museum uh, on the old Central Dock site. It and a number of other developments, uh, businesses in that new uh, Bayside location are redefining what uh, Coos Bay looks like. And uh, it's a beautiful pub. Stop in, they've got great food. They've still got the original pub in downtown Coos Bay. So that's a shout out to Annie and, and Karma. Next time you're down there, check them out. Yes, so um, yesterday I just toured um, the facility where we're going to host an Otter Beer Fest tasting event and judging event. Um, hopefully, at OMSI on January 29th. So mark your calendars now to be free. It's a Saturday from 6 to 9 p.m. We'll have samples of all the brews. Uh, we'll have some food, a really exciting live band that Bob can talk more about, hopefully. And um, we're also inviting uh, Oregon Seaweed to come table, as well as Jacobson Salt Company, who's been a great partner with us this year as well. And um, Patagonia Portland is going to come 
and do a table and also pour some beer too. So if you Super. Have questions about that. Yeah, it's going to be a really fun event. Hopefully COVID wise, you know, we can still meet in person and mask up when appropriately, but uh, I am very, very excited for. Yeah, this should be fun. The, I've, I wrote my old pal, uh, Patrick Buckley, he of uh, Pagan Jug Band fame, but he's got a new aggregation of people called Uncle Mary in Portland, and they're, they're really good. You know, they're very fun, entertaining, and great music. And so uh, Pat's, Pat and Uncle, with Uncle Mary will be uh, playing. Perfect. And um, I wanted to say one more thing. What was that? Well, I lost it. I'll That's probably okay. it as We're soon talking. as I change the page. But um, yeah, okay. Moving on. So yeah, I'm sure everybody on this call or on this Zoom uh, knows that three weeks or so ago, maybe a little longer, a single sea otter showed up at Yaquinta Head, just north of, of uh, Newport. Now this little guy is, was undoubtedly a, 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 you know, a sub-adult male that had detached from the Olympic coast population about 200 miles to the north. It was almost certainly not from, from California. The closest one is about 600 miles and many sharks in between. Uh, he was around a few days around the you went ahead, in fact, uh, maybe 10 days or so. I went over to see him on maybe the fourth or fifth day. And there he was out there in the water. And also up on the cliff were literally hundreds of people with uh, spotting scopes, binoculars, and just the naked eye uh, with their kids pointing and looking. And just, and when, the, when this guy swam from the south side over to the north side, everybody followed him over to the to the side to check him out. And it was really, really great to see the, just sort of the reception, the excitement over this lone sea otter. And, and uh, unfortunately, uh, he got chomped by a shark a few days later. Uh, sharks often, especially uh, the adolescent sharks who are learning what to eat, will chomp anything that looks like food including sea otters, and even though they don't eat them because they get a mouthful of fur, uh, the bite is almost always fatal to a sea otter, and that's what happened with this guy, which is very unfortunate. But it did give us a glim glimpse into the future of what this could be like, and the excitement and the, the support for bringing sea otters back to Oregon was made tangible uh, by this little guy, and so I, I felt like I lost one of my my beloved pets when he uh, succumbed, but uh, uh, it was great to see him in the wild and a hint of things to come. Yes, and thank you to the staff for quickly acting um, and took him in and did surgery when uh, he washed ashore onto the beach with his shark wounds. Um, so thank you to them for swift action and taking care of him and giving him a full belly of food while he was rehabilitating. Um, and it, it was a very, very sad day to find out that he passed, but um, we do have lots of lessons to learn and we are excited to move forward with some shark research, hopefully next year, um, to figure out where the sharks hang out on the Oregon coast. Um, because I think we would all like to know that for future reintroduction purposes. And so <clears throat> moving on, uh, as the communications person, I always have to throw this slide up. Uh, if you don't already, um, sign up for our RAF newsletter that goes out once a month. You can do so quickly on our website, www.alakaalliance.org. We're also across social media. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. So if you haven't followed, liked, or subscribed to any of those, please feel free to do so and you'll get all the fun updates about sea otters, hopefully returning to Oregon in the next couple of years. I just wanna say that Chanel has really done a, a fantastic job of populating all these platforms. I've, I've gotten feedback from several people, uh, much younger than I, who follow this stuff 
uh, who have just said, hey, who's your, who's your social media person? She does a great job. So it's been great and it's really expanded our reach. And I was a little skeptical going into this, but hey, it's a fact of life these days. And Chanel has done a great job. A lot of content out there. It's all about sea otters 24 seven. Yes, thanks, Bob. That's really sweet. Uh, so this is kind of a shorter party event for you this evening. And we just wanna say happy holidays. Thank you so much for your consistent support. And um, if you have any questions or comments, yeah. feel free. Anything, yeah, yeah. open it up, open We're it up. We've happy talked, to yeah. sit and chat. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that's, that's it. We hope you have a wonderful new year and a good holiday. I can't believe that it's almost 2022. <laughs> what a crazy year. Okay, I'm looking through some of the comments here. Gina, you're welcome. We, it's, it's, this is fun and entirely worth doing. Uh, you know, some days are long and sometimes I feel like the driving down the freeway in the spring with bugs hitting my windshield with all the things going on, but th this is entirely worth doing. So I appreciate uh, your comment. Wonderful. Yeah, and uh, Katie, we're excited to see what 2022 brings. Um, it's one of those things where you just never know what's gonna happen and as momentum builds here, uh, we'll see what goes on. And Gina, tell your kids we're doing it for them. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. this Katie. is all about the kids. Katie, who's on our board, uh, speaking of kids, she's focused in education <laughs> and we're working next year on several curriculum and education packets regarding sea otters for multiple um, tribal youth. So be sure to be on the lookout for that. We'll have more information coming um, over the next couple months. So that should be really, really thrilling. I'm excited. And Cynthia, yes, uh, you know, Dave is on my mind a lot when we do this uh, work. Uh, he was a big influence on me uh, many years ago uh, when I met him and he had this crazy notion of bringing the sea otters back. Uh, little did I know that 20 years later, I'd be helping to pick up his flag and uh, with my colleagues on the board and, and carry it forward. So I appreciate your comment about David. Let's see. Yes, and thanks, Cynthia, for being our biggest fan on Twitter. I, see <laughs> I appreciate it very much. <laughs> yeah, and Ryan, thanks for your comment. Uh, um, yeah, we're trying to trying to do good work. That's what it's all about. And you know, we know there's a lot of bumps in the road, and there are concerns to overcome. But uh, you know, this is an idea that. If you really peel it back, it's it, we just got to do this. Yes, and Mary, since you won a prize tonight, please email me your address um, so I can send you a present. Don't forget. Oh yeah, Pat, uh, Patricia. Yeah, you're talking about uh, uh, kayaking with sea otters in Monterey Bay in the in the eighties. Yeah, it all it takes is seeing them up close, and suddenly it's like. This is real. These these things are are amazing. And what's what's been really uh, astounding to me is uh, literally diving beneath the surface of sea otters and understanding just how much they affect everything in the marine environment uh, and uh, in in good ways. And so, um, yeah, we start with as my son says, we start with come for the for the cute and stay for the carbon. Uh, so there's lots of uh, ramifications to bring them back so that's yes, uh, i'll throw that in there too about kayaking in monterey with sea otters i did my undergrad at cal state monterey bay and volunteered at the monterey bay aquarium with the river otters when they still had them and the sea otters and loved loved kayaking right out there in the bay with the wild sea otters. Um, it's an experience unlike any other and hopefully in future generations here we can have kids kayaking and experiencing sea otters here in the Oregon coast. 
And Ryan, we'll take you up on your offer to connect and do a presentation with Oops uh, um, on uh, sea otters because I, I agree with you. It's uh, that our two efforts would be really compatible. So, yes, that would be fun. I'd love to give a presentation. And Isabella, your comment here about sea otters are to the oceans as wolves are to the land. Yes, uh, although they're cuter and furrier and more cuddly, although keep your fingers well away from their mouth. Uh, yeah, I mean, with wolves, who knew that bringing wolves back to Yellowstone would increase songbirds, uh, increase riparian habitat, uh, improve salmon conditions, et cetera. And that's the kind of uh, ripple effect that sea otters will have in helping to restore the diversity and vitality of our nearshore ocean and our kelp beds and eelgrass in our estuaries. So, super. Yeah. I ran, I'm just typing in my email address so we can facilitate that uh, presentation for next year. And so also speaking about presentations, our first January webinar will be on January 20th, a Thursday with Laura Tesler, who many of you may know um, because she's a fantastic activist for ocean conservation and an underwater photographer. So she's doing what lies beneath uh, is the name of the presentation and she'll take us on a Pacific Coast underwater tour um, of some of the wonderful uh, ecosystems and wildlife that she's seen under under the waves. Yep. So you, yeah. And I would also her. commend if uh, go to our website and look up the, our, the various webinars that uh, we've hosted, uh, including a recent one with Josie Island on uh, kelp. Uh, oddly enough, the sort of sort of the art and science. What was the name of the of webinar? Chasing kelp. That's right. Chasing kelp. Mm -hmm. Really, really interesting stuff. And there's many others. Our podcasts are there with you can listen to while you're doing the dishes or whatever. And uh, so we're trying to create a, a very content rich website for anybody that's interested in sea otters, including the kids. So more to come. Thanks everybody for sticking around tonight. And it was great to uh, report out to you uh, kind of what we've been doing, kind of the highlights of this year. It's amazing how far we've come in the last couple of years, uh, but it's not entirely our doing. It's the doing of many others who have supported us and kind of enjoyed our enthusiasm and uh, moved, moved us along. So we appreciate it. Yes, great. Thanks again for joining. Congrats to Jess, Claire, and Mary for winning our flash prizes tonight. You'll get a surprise soon in the mail from us. And have a great holiday and a wonderful new year. And we'll see you in 2022. Cheers. Bye. Oh, yep. <clears throat> Cheers. I have your little side beverage here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye-bye, bye everybody. I'll see you on there, too. I'll see you in a couple days. <laughs> Bye.